Welcome back to my testimony. We are at the parking by Radisson at the Attic. Great place, great cuisine. You need to check out uh, the conference facilities and it's affordable. It's in Westlands. Find out what happens here and you'll definitely love it. We are speaking to Hope Susan who went through tribulations in her marriage and uh, she's been able to overcome and she's here to encourage us. So here you are a few months down the line. Yes. And you had already gotten some red flags yes. within your marriage. Yes. So your husband starts to cheat. Yes. And you said at one point he actually brings someone in the house. Tell us about that. When he brought someone in the house, I, he had dropped me in school on a Sunday. Okay. Because I was going to do an exam. And when I was doing an exam, it was a whole week. Mm. So I used to go stay in the hostels until the end of the exam but when it came to wednesday i just thought as a good wife i am not having an exam tomorrow <laughs> uh, let me go I home to go back to my husband yes oh my and i went home but when i entered in the house i could see some funny things mm. girlish things in my house and um, in my wardrobe there are clothes that have been put in the closet right. that are not mine okay. and I thought they are for the sisters mm -hmm. but unfortunately they were for another woman. Let me ask you had, had you had you before even that had you suspected? Okay before that there are many other incidences okay. that uh, I, I encountered in that marriage because uh, he had so many girls right. and most of them actually amazingly i, I think because um, i was a pastor mm. i could meet with all of them every time <laughs> i know that a person i just call them we meet here in town how did you know uh, through the phone uh, messages uh, not really i am um, i believe uh, in a god who speaks all right and i could pray and and god speaks so much to me through dreams and I could dream and God could give me even exactly the name of the person. These were this people in church, right? Yes. Were they people in church? Yeah, one was a woman of God in a certain church here in Nairobi. And uh, I was given a name. And in that, na that name, when I, in the morning when I was wiping the carpet, I saw, I saw a paper with a name, the same name that I saw in the dream. Mm. And also the number i called that number i met that lady and you spoke we spoke and i i used to carry my marriage certificate my <laughs> photos and tell them excuse me i'm a this pastor don't spoil my marriage right yeah will they confess will they will they they, they, they were he was lying to them that he was single uh, so maybe he was removing his ring right. or something and so most of them they believed that he was single mm. uh, another one um the one that made me to leave my marriage right. knew was even in my in my wedding wow. yes but he's the one who who took my husband away from home now all right so 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 these were multiple situations exactly. and cases exactly that you saw yes did you ever confront your husband yes we had so many encounters even with the pastor mm -hmm. we could see the pastor who joined us right. the parents we could have as many sittings in the church but um, he confessed one time that he had entered in a cult mm. and um, perhaps that is the cult that was making him behave the, that way because every time we could uh, confront him he could uh, be born again again all right <laughs> and i so i forgave my husband several times wow. and uh it's unfortunately that he did not change i prayed for him but he did not change what what pushed you to keep for, forgiving and, and and meeting parents every time you you did you think of leaving many times uh leaving no it was not an option for it you. was not an option because you are a church I'm a church leader. You are a church I'm leader. I'm the church counselor. Wow. I don't want, actually I was living for people. Mm. And that's why I'm here to inspire people so that they can speak out. Right. Because when you are going through trauma, they, it steals your voice. You ah. cannot speak. You are hiding. Right. And that's, the hiding made me enter into a depression. Wow. And this depression made me even lose 
a lot of things, mm. including Your ministry as well. my ministry. Right. Because uh, for me to leave that marriage, actually it was not Tell us my how, wish. Tell how uh, that happened. One of his concubines, yes. <laughs> uh, they decided to take me to the central police station uh -huh. because uh, my, my ex took my phone, wrote a bad message that was considered to be a harassment but he's the one to who the wrote lady. it to the lady. Wow. And uh, I think they could want, they wanted me to leave my house, mm -hmm. but I refused, yeah? So they looked for a way. And when I went to the central and uh, we talked we, uh, with the policemen there and they, uh, God turned everything out mm -hmm. and they even confessed to me that uh, uh, this is not a good man. Actually, when they realized I'm the legal wife, right. and they told me they planned that in a pub, now I knew my husband even... You got the details. Drink, ...drinks. Exactly. Wow. Mm. My husband also drinks. Mm. And so after that, I left, and that's how I entered into a depression. Mm. And um, But bef before that, yes. he decided, when he, he saw that he is doing too much of these women, he decided to take poison, to commit wow. suicide. And he attempted. Wow. But thank God where we were living, it was near a hospital, and he was helped. Right. And this woman of God forgave him again mm. and uh, <laughs> stayed with him in the hospital. You forgave more than 70 times uh, seven more in, than in that marriage. More than what Jesus said we should. So, so, so here we are, and we've seen even situations where the other day a husband killed the wife mm -hmm. in, in church yes and because of marital issues yes so here you are you move out yes did you after the depression and everything did you did you feel it was the right step you took to leave that marriage exactly especially as a pastor especially as a pastor as a leader church leader well, my situation may not be like any other person right. because number one, I entered into that marriage when God had warned me. Mm. So God was not in that marriage as much as I was praying. Maybe God was looking at me and asking me, who took you, you there? <laughs> <laughs> and so um, after that, uh, my coming out uh, to, according to me, mm -hmm. it was in the plan of God. Right. It was in the plan of God because uh, when I came out, I've realized that I could have died because mm. even for him, he confessed that many are times that he tried to kill me, right. even when I was sleeping. But thank God that God saved me from that marriage. And that's why we should be very careful when we are entering into relationships. Right. Let God lead you. Mm -hmm. And so um, after that, I, I felt that it was very good for me to leave that marriage because I am who I am today mm. because I left that. Because the depression that I was going through, I even resigned from work. I wrote a letter, thank God for the, my spiritual parent yeah. who refused even to release me. And so, I decided let me let me not um, continue being there, and uh, I left. Right. Of course, it was a, a, a period of uh, healing mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. Did you ever forgive your your husband? I know you forgave him many times in the relationship. Yes, yes. But after you left, did you release him from your heart? Exactly. What I did, I did something that I call alignment right. in Psalm 13. Okay. First of all, I took all my pain because it was too much to God. And I told God to forgive me. And I told God uh, how he had failed me also. Mm. Then I also requested him to have mercy on me. Right. Then finally, I, I told him how I want to live my life now. Uh -huh. And I forgave him. I forgave actually every other person including those other women right. that uh, destroyed my marriage and i forgave all of them and i set him free and that was not easy it was not it is not easy right healing is not easy mm -hmm. it is that, that that process is not easy but you have to do it right 
All right, here you are. We need to move uh, so that we get to know where you are today. Exactly. Later on, you got into another relationship after a while. Yes. Tell us about that. After I healed, I entered into another relationship where I met a man of God. Mm -hmm. We knew each other even before I knew this other guy. All right. But he went to study in the U.S. And uh, he, he was following me and he could see that things are not good and all, all everything about me yeah. and uh, one day he told me this is where you belong mm. and he decided to come took me to a very nice place and uh, asked me for a relationship all right and i agreed of course and okay. again i wanted to prove a point mm. i can still get married okay but unfortunately uh, after some time he he revealed to me that he was sick Okay. And uh, still I, I decided I can pray about it. Mm. He was having a cancer and uh, I decided we are going to trust God. And in the process of trusting God, um, he, he went, once confessed that he got healed, he had a throat cancer, mm. he, ho he got healed, but later on he developed a lung cancer. Wow. And uh, he came here, he had come here to, in Kenya to preach mm. in a certain church. But uh, the following day he fell sick, he was admitted in a, in a hospital here in Nairobi. He went into a coma, he did not wake up from the coma. Wow. He also passed on. And he passed on when he was planning to marry you? Exactly, you actually it was, we were two, two months before we start our introduction. Wow. That threw you now into another dilemma as exactly. well. Exactly. Wow. I went to a depression that I almost, I almost lost it. So having gone through these two scenarios, and as we close, yes. having gone through these two, two scenarios, were you able to, to come up again? And what has that formed out of you? Exactly. Because of what I went through, I, I realized that somebody can lose it as much as you think you are a leader. Right. And so I decided to take some time and deal it with God mm -hmm. and uh, try to make sure that I move on with my life. I decided to move on and also forward. I decided that I am going now to become what I wanted to become even before I entered in this marriage uh -huh. and not allow this divorce mm. make me what I am not. And I shook of everything right. and take up with, with God right. and, and started living my life again. Wow. And doing ministry. And doing ministry. And, and enjoying that's how, your that's, life. Exactly. And that's how I started even my ministry, ministry of right. Rose Among Thorns. Mm -hmm. Because I knew there are others that are going through that's this right. depression, but they mm -hmm. cannot speak it because they, they are in pastoral. Especially in church. Especially in church. Because of the stigma. Exactly. Right. Wow. And so here you are. Yes. We thank God for you. Amen. And uh, we pray that uh, you will keep doing the ministry. Amen. You will keep serving. Amen. Encouraging people. Sure. But uh, that God will also come through for you. We never know about God. <laughs> it's never too late for God. Amen. We serve a God of the second chance. chance. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you Hope so much. Hope Susan Passer, God bless you. Thank you for sharing with us. Yeah. And may the Lord bless you. I hope and believe that that has encouraged you. Speak out. Speak out. And uh, if you're in such a situation, you have an opportunity to redeem because God cares for you. And he wants to see you happy as you keep serving him. Amazing, amazing testimony by Pastor Hope Susan. We are there actually at the antique. You need to check it out. Visit this place. It's in Westland and you'll love it. Till next Sunday, thank you for tuning in. God bless you and have an amazing day.